Chuck Fresh from Computer Care Clinic. Still getting, I mean, it's 2020. I don't know when you're watching this, but 2020, we're still getting questions from people asking us about this streaming stuff. I can't believe people are still going to Redbox and renting videos. You don't have to do that anymore. I mean, if you have broadband internet, and almost everyone does now, you can stream the same movies you can pick up on a disc and you don't have to bring them back. In some cases, it might be a little bit cheaper. So it started, let's talk about entertainment. It started with VHS, you remember that, right? And then we came out with DVDs. And then Blu-rays came out, which gave us kind of HD DVDs, but there were HD DVDs too, but that never really took off. By the time Blu-rays came out, we were already streaming. So basically, every big movie that comes out that's released, you can get on a streaming service, one or another. And there's a couple of them. You can pick, you can choose just two of them if you do it smartly. You get just about 99% of every worthwhile movie or television show that comes out. And you will never have to pay a cable or satellite bill again. No contracts. You can dump them whenever you want. It's all a monthly, month by month thing. A lot of them are pretty cheap. I mean, Netflix is about 15 bucks. And if you do uh, Amazon Prime, which gives you cheap shipping. I mean, who doesn't buy things on Amazon? I'm just about everybody's buying at least something, a couple of things a year. It gives you um, upgraded shipping, plus you have access to their entire video library for an entire year for about 10 bucks a month. I mean, you can't beat it. I mean, what are you paying for cable now? You're paying 70, 80, a hundred dollars a month for a hundred channels you probably will never watch. You don't need that. You can't pick and choose the channels that you want on cable yet. I'm sure it's coming, but they haven't figured out how to price that right because they're making so much money bundling everything together and charging you for things you don't watch that, you know, if it works, don't fix it. You will still need an internet connection, but to get broadcast TV, here's the beautiful thing. They're still broadcasting over the airwaves. If you have an antenna, you can still get broadcast television. All the major networks in most areas. I'm about more between 35 to 45 miles from our antennas and we get NBC, CBS, Fox, ABC and a whole bunch of other channels too with all these sideband all in full glorious HD with not as much compression as you're going to get in cable. I mean the, the picture actually looks better on broadcast TV and we don't have problems when it rains we still get the signal we don't have problems when uh, they have outages because the lines are cut somewhere because these things are coming out over the, the air like they did back in the old days. We're talking broadcast television. It still exists. It's better than ever, and it's completely free. It's pretty cool. You do have to deal with commercials and everything that broadcast TV comes with, but we haven't paid a cable bill in this house, in this household, since I believe it is 2005. And that is insane. You know how much money we've saved? Thousands of dollars on cable and satellite bills. And you can begin to do this now if you're not doing it right now. My name is Chuck Fresh. Join me on this little journey. I'll show you about streaming services that you can pick up, what's available on them, and broadcast antenna TV and how you can save yourself thousands of dollars a year. Chuck Rush here with Computer Care Clinic, and today we're going to help you cut your cables. Lots of people, look at all the channels I'm getting. I haven't paid a cable bill for television in over 11 years. I get every network channel I need, and every show I want to watch, I can watch commercial-free through Netflix, Amazon Prime. And you, you can even stream programs now from your favorite cable providers like ESPN, CNN, even HGTV, National Geographic. Look at this. This is broadcast television you even get a guide over digital broadcast television now which will tell you on what's tell you what's on tv for the rest of the day it's amazing how far we have come since i was a kid and we had television antennas if you don't have a new tv you're going to need something like this it's called a digital converter box and this will turn even your old tube tvs into something that's capable in receiving today's high definition well they won't show high definition but you'll still be able to receive today's digital television signals which is the standard since uh, i think 2007. yeah you can convert your old tvs and you don't have to rent these boxes from your cable company anymore you can pay about 30 bucks they even come with a nifty remote 
remote. About 30 bucks on Amazon.com. The links are on our site. There's a whole bunch of antennas. We are currently testing a whole bunch of them, including this monster, to see what picks up broadcast signals. We're about 35 miles from Orlando. And this one here, it's a monster. It's called a blade. And we have the link to this on our website, too. It's the best we've tested so far. It even picks up NBC, which is VHF. It's on the high band. That's the hardest thing you're going to be able to get is a VHF signal. Most of the d digital TV signals are on the UHF band, which are real easy to get, even from 40 or more miles away. I have an antenna up in my attic. I can pick up all these channels. Again, I'm 35 miles away from the broadcast towers, even the VHF channel, the NBC affiliate. And crystal clear, beautiful HD picture. Works great on my smart TV or any TV with a digital tuner is built after 2007. Okay, let's begin with broadcast TV. I'm going to give you some links in the comments below for antennas that you can set up right now. And you can probably get every major network broadcast station in your area. Again, I'm somewhere between 35 to 45 miles away. And that's kind of the long range of being far away from your antenna. And these, look at these channels. All the major networks coming through clear as day with one antenna positioned in my attic that I installed myself and ran through the existing wiring in my home. And look at this. I'm getting this TV. I haven't paid a cable bill again since, I think, 2005, about 15 years, if I'm correct. And the things I can't get on broadcast TV, the stuff that everybody's talking about that runs on cable, you can pick up on Netflix or Amazon Prime. And I'm going to give you a rundown on those two streaming services, which are very, very affordable. You can have both of them for about 25 bucks a month, fully featured with 4K quality. And I'll talk about that in a second. But let's take a look at the antenna. I have a second antenna on my patio because I don't have wiring. Okay, I have a TV on my outside patio, and there's no cable outlet there. I can get the streaming services through Wi-Fi perfectly. However... When I want to watch broadcast outside, I have to run an antenna because it won't connect to my home antenna. Yeah, I could call an electrician in for about 600 bucks. He could run cable through the house and through the concrete block and forget it. Or for 30 bucks, 30, 35 bucks, I can buy a powered antenna and just run it across my patio when I need it and pick up all the broadcast channels. This thing works great. I have a link for this one in the, in the, in the uh, comments below too. And you could just paste this up on your wall. Now, due to the positioning of my house, I had to put it in this tree, believe it or not. And when I twist it in just the right direction in this tree, it picks up CBS, ABC, NBC, and Fox. And it is a powered antenna. You have to go with a powered antenna if you're doing any kind of length. I think anything over like 18 miles, you're probably going to have to get a powered antenna. Fortunately, this is USB powered. It plugs into the back of this TV, this smart TV. It gives it enough power to run the antenna. So I don't have to run an extra cord for that because cords are at a premium on your outside TVs as they probably are at your place. So people have asked me, can you watch TV on your computer without streaming using an antenna? Technically you can, yes. You need something called a digital converter box. And that's what this guy is. And we used to sell all this stuff but we couldn't make any money. We couldn't compete against the big companies. And what this box does is it takes your antenna signal and it converts it into a digital tuner. So this digital tuner then connects to your TV via an HDMI. We had this on a projector, actually. We were watching that outside, showing movies on our patio uh, with our neighbors, which is pretty cool. Comes with a remote, too, which is it's like having your little own TV receiver. I equate these to something like a UHF converter, but this is your all-in-one system now, your entire receiver now. And you can hook this up to any unit that does not have a uh, HD or digital television uh, receiving capability, including projectors and your computer, too. Very affordable, too. I think these are under $50, as a matter of fact. And uh, some of them have built-in storage with hard drives or solid-state storage where you can actually use them like an old TiVo. I know nobody has those anymore, but um, you can actually record programs on these things too. Very cool, very reliable, and inexpensive. All right, so the easiest way to do this is if you have a smart TV, all these menus should be built into most recent ones. We have a TV that's about four years old. It does have the smart interface, but the smart interface isn't super reliable on this particular Samsung. I don't know if the memory's going bad. So we put something called a Prime Stick in here. And these are things that Amazon sells for about 30 to 40 bucks. 
And essentially what it is is a little computer actually in this little HDMI sized thing that plugs right into any one of your inputs in the TV. Now we have an upgraded one that actually has an Ethernet port, which is nice because Ethernet is always the best way to go. It's the most reliable, it's the fastest. And especially if you want to stream 4K content and you're not necessarily right next to your wireless router, it's probably the best way to go. So this particular one has an adapter which costs us a few extra bucks uh, for an ethernet connection and it goes right through our main internet. So this is the fire stick and the fire stick is neat because you can access all these different streaming apps through the fire stick itself, which is nice. Amazon's playing nice with all the other companies, even its competition, which is nice. So you can get Netflix and of course, Amazon owns prime video. They make the prime stick. And you get the IMT, IMDb TV, which is now uh, an offshoot of Amazon's Prime Video. It's now ad-supported. It's a free way to stream movies and TV. And uh, they just show commercials during it, like commercial TV, which is really neat. So Prime Video, IMDb TV, both owned by Amazon. Google owns YouTube. YouTube has a paid streaming service, too, with many channels, uh, many well, a lot of shows on here, and also it does some live TV as well. There's At Home, and then all these other streaming things, including Hulu, which is a pretty big deal right now. I believe they were just bought by Disney. And there's some music streaming, too, like Pandora and Spotify. And you see some of the channels actually have their own streaming apps, too. Some of them are subscription-only, like HBO. And some of them you need to log in with your cable or satellite provider's login information. Satellite Radio has an app, iHeartRadio, YouTube has a couple of different ones here. I'm not sure which one the latest one is, but you can see all these different streaming apps. And a lot of these are free. Like our local WFTV, our ABC affiliate, if I click on this, it will actually stream the WFTV news. And I can get weather or whatever I want 24 7. Um, this is commercial supported too, so that's kind of the trade off here. But this is actually their stream, which is uh, their broadcast. So if you can't get the broadcast for whatever reason, if you can't get an antenna where you're not within range, you can potentially still pick up the stream as long as you have a reliable internet service. And that's the rub here. You're still going to need pretty fast internet. Actually, that's not necessarily true. We have a 100 megabit service with Spectrum here. And I was able to stream at least HD fairly well on two different devices simultaneously. And as well as use the computer for the internet too. So at 100 megabyte, megabit speed, it worked pretty well. We have gigabit speed, which is a 1000 megabit speed with our AT&T service. We have fiber optic in this place, which is pretty cool. And uh, super fast, 10 times faster, theoretically, than the Spectrum offering here. Although Spectrum now offers up to 600, I think, in this neighborhood, 600 megabits per second. Now, on the horizon, we're looking at the 5G routers, which are going to be completely wireless. That's right, the 5G system will most likely be completely wireless. So they will put a modem in your home. And you can position that anywhere you want that has AC power. And it, as long as you're within range of the 5G signal, it's going to deliver these incredibly fast internet speeds to your house, to multiple devices. Increased speed, increased bandwidth. Um, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of rumors going around saying 5G is dangerous. Is it dangerous? We really don't know yet. We have a video on this channel that talks about 5G and Wi-Fi and wireless radio signals in general. And to be honest, there's no current general medical consensus whether those signals are bad for humans or animals or anything yet. So we really don't know yet. Um, so we're just keeping an eye on that. As soon as we hear something, we'll let you know for sure. But the way it looks now, the industry is saying there are, there's no damage, there's no problem from RF. And again, check out our video on this channel about RF signals and Wi-Fi and all that fun stuff. And again, 5G on the horizon, probably a year or two out, and that's going to get rid of the wired internet, and it's going to give everybody super fast speeds. I don't know what the cost on that's going to be. I think they're still working on that. But again, you can access the world through these streaming devices. Again, through any modern smart TV is probably going to have this interface built in, so you won't need to buy a Fire Stick. However, the Fire Stick 
is the latest and greatest technology. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you're going to get a lot of that Prime stuff uh, for, well, actually, at no additional cost. They give you a lot of Prime TV shows and movies for free, which is pretty cool. And uh, tons of stuff here on Netflix. Netflix is pretty amazing. They've been around a while. We jumped on probably, I'm not exactly sure when we did. It had to be 10 years ago now when they used to send DVDs through the mail. And I thought it was such a great thing to get DVDs in the mail. You didn't have to walk into a blockbuster and that'd be incredibly helpful now during a, an epidemic, a pandemic. But then they've uh, picked up on their streaming. They really offer a tremendous amount of stuff here in terms of TV shows, movies, and their own content. Tiger King is the thing everybody was talking about a little while back, but all these other incredible series that either Netflix puts out itself or that uh, they subscribe to or license from the networks or whoever provided these movies, whoever produced these movies or distributes them. And just a tremendous amount of things here. You can sort by... There's a pretty good sort here. You can sort by children's, family movies, anime, comedy, crime movies, TV, documentaries. An amazing, almost endless collection of basically everything you can think of. Now, there are a lot of movies who don't subscribe. They won't allow Netflix to show them because they're too expensive or they're contracted by another network. But that's okay, too, because you can check out the other networks, too. Netflix... Um, Here's the current pricing on Netflix. Pretty reasonable if you think about it. I mean, for we pay like $16 a month, I think, and we can stream to four devices, which is pretty neat. And we are Prime members too. So for $99, I think it's $129, I'm not sure what it is a year now. You can get Prime shipping, which is two-day. It used to be two-day. I'm not sure if that's working anymore. Plus, they give you Prime Video. And uh, with our AT&T, we get Amazon Music, too, which we're using a lot. We can stream just about any popular song that's ever come out. Now, YouTube, again, has its own offerings. You can get YouTube TV. We haven't tried that one yet, but a lot of people have, and they're very happy with it. Same, I think it's like $15 a month. But since we have all these other services, there's really no need for us to jump on there. Um, and also, there's Hulu. We played around with Hulu a little bit, found some really good shows on Hulu. And there will be some shows on one or more of these channels that are the same, and then some you may not find because they have an exclusive contract for a while. But they usually don't last a long time. What's neat about Prime is Prime continually updates their stuff, and they have a lot of agreements with networks, which is pretty cool. So you can purchase the show commercial free, which is really neat. Um, like a day after they air it on network TV or on a cable channel. This is how we were able to watch um, shows like Better Call Saul. We don't have cable and that's on the AMC network. And uh, we wanted to watch it. We wanted to watch HBO too. We were able to subscribe through here for $15 a month. Once in a while, we'll turn that on and binge watch some stuff and then turn it off. And again, Amazon's really cool too in terms of subscriptions. You can start it and then stop it whenever you want, really. It's no big deal. And they offer a tremendous amount of channels here too through their Prime service. Some of them are paid, some of them are free. But uh, it's just really an almost unlimited amount of content. Like, as many things as you could possibly watch in one lifetime and then some. Um, again, a lot of major network shows will show here. That's the thing. It could be a day afterwards, a day after the show airs on the network. So if you're standing around the water cooler, you might be a day behind. But you know what? So what? It's no big deal. You didn't have to sit through commercials. Maybe they did. You know what I mean? A lot of cable stuff doesn't have commercial on the cable stuff, but you know what I'm talking about here. It's um, It, it saves you the expense of paying 50 75 100 I understand some people pay up to $200 a month. And think about that. $200 a month for a satellite program with hundreds of channels they probably never watch. I know we had cable for years and there was a lot of junk. We just never, I didn't watch ESPN. We weren't really in the sports. So like we're paying for all these ESPN channels, which are the most expensive. I understand that's like seven, $8 a month out of your cable bill. And you can't go a la carte yet 
because the cable companies and satellite companies can't figure out how to make that work and still remain profitable. So they bundle all that crap in there, give you a bunch of channels they know you're not going to watch, and you end up having to pay for the whole darn thing. To me, that just didn't make sense, which is why we haven't had cable. I think it's over 15 years now. We've been streaming and using antennas since, I think, 2005 is when we finally cut our cord. We've saved thousands of dollars on cable bills. Now, we still need the internet. We need broadband internet. I do pay for two streaming services here because we work from home. So if internet's important to you, which it is to pretty much everybody, you're still going to need to do that. There's no way out of that. But the 5G offering, when everything goes wireless, this could open up to additional competition, which it probably won't, knowing how the big companies are structured and there's no antitrust anymore. But that's a video for another day. So these streaming services, fabulous, fantastic. You can watch them on your TV, on your smart TV. If you don't have a smart TV, as long as you've got an HDMI input, I think they even take the old-fashioned. You could technically, I think theoretically, even hook it up to an old-school TV, but I don't think anybody even has those anymore. And um, they have adapters for all that stuff. You can watch things on your tablet, on your phone, or on your computer. I mean, you can even wirelessly connect your phone to a lot of TVs now, which is really cool. So all kinds of options for watching these streaming television services. In a world of confusing technology, one man aims to save you from the craziness. And that man is Chuck Fresh, the PCGYN. And this is Computer Care Clinic's collection of tips of the day.